yesterday, or in the previous video, we talked about Gary Moore, and we tried to extract some, some cool uh, insights from his playing that we can use in our own playing. Without just playing his licks, we, we try to look at what, what is it that makes him uh, special? What is it that, w if we look at him uh, in comparison with others, what can we really learn from that guy? And the number one thing I said was passion, was intensity. Um, and if you didn't watch the video, please go back and do so. Today, I promised you that we would look at some of his faster lines and, uh, and that they wouldn't be hard. <laughs> um, and it's a really cool thing he does, and it's one of my favorite things to do, actually, because it's so fluent, it's so flexible, um, and you can really learn to do it in a, in a relatively short period of time. Um, so let's just look at what it is. Um, we're in the key of A, and please go download the uh, jam track and this video. Uh, click the link below if you're on YouTube, um, so you can play along. We're in the key of A, so we have our blue scale shape here, our first position blue scale shape in the fifth fret, and all the, all the other shapes um, up the neck there. What we also have is that we have a track, a classic blues rock track that is in minor. So we have the A minor playing in the background, then it goes to D minor. So we're basically in, in A minor, and then back to A again. And then we go to E, major. So that's a classic A minor chord progression that we could have used in a classical chord progression or a Spanish. Right? Same thing. But here we're using it in a blues context and using the blues scale. Um, so we also have the A natural minor laying underneath or on top of the blues scale. And one of the key skills to learn in this style of music is mixing the two. It's being able to play We're expanding the blues scale with the sound of these two extra notes here that comes from the natural minor scale. And that's what we're going to do here. So I'm just going to line up the natural minor scale on just one string here. So uh, on the B string. So. We're going to connect two uh, blue scale shapes. We have the blue scale shape in the fifth fret. Then I have the fourth position blue scale shape in the 12th fret. And go download the charts uh, from the website um, right now so you can follow along. Right, and the fourth position up here. We're gonna connect the two by simply taking one string and taking the natural minor notes all the way up. So. This is just an example of how to use this little sequence he does, or uses a lot. So we have the 5th, the 6th fret on the B string, the 8th fret on the B string. Two of them are pentatonic notes, and one of them are exclusively natural minor, which is the 6th fret on the B string. Then we have the 10th fret, also a pentatonic note, the 12th, which is exclusively a natural minor note, and then we have the 13th fret. And then we are actually touching the 4th position shape, and then we have the 15th fret as well. So we could play, so 5, 6, 8, 10, 12, 13, and 15 on the B string. I'm gonna play a simple, simple sequence here that's extremely effective, and you can use it for a variety of purposes, so please follow me even though it's simple. And please, just because it's simple doesn't mean you don't have to practice it a lot to get it right. Uh, so practice it with the metronome to get the timing right, to be able to do this. That's the exercise, right? Right? Very effective exercise to create these little bursts of notes, like... Right, you can just... If you know that one sequence, you can use it in every way. You can use just a little bit of it. You can use it for a full run. And, oh, you can use it with out rhythm. So basically, you want to practice it with the metronome and, you know, really get the timing right. So you can play it like... 
in time. That, 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 right? And you start by just going back and forth between two positions. So you take the fifth fret, hammering onto 13th, pull off again down to fifth. So, right? Then you slide up to the uh, sixth fret and hammer on in the eighth fret and pull off again. So, right? And then you slide back again so you don't have to pick it all. Slide, hammer on, pull off, slide, hammer on, pull off, back and forth. And you want to learn to do it fast, right? But with timing. Okay, then the next thing you can do is you can drop the timing. But please don't start there. You, ha you can go... Right, and get a really cool sound. So basically, I'm sliding from the fifth to the sixth. But just before I do that, I hammer on and pull off. Then I go back again. You slide from the sixth to the fifth. But this time, I'm also hammering on in the eighth fret and pulling off just before I do it. So instead of going... I go... Right, really cool effect. So let's try and use that, that simple thing, and again, play the exercise. And then I'm going to connect my, my favorite shape, the first position blue scale shape, with my second favorite shape, the fourth position blue scale, just by following. All right, so let's just try and do that with some music. Uh, underneath here, Let's see if I can get the samples to load and the iPad to work. Is there a couple of days on it? Uh. Other way around. That was a melodic way of using the sequence, right? with it and notice when when uh, Gary Moore is actually using this sequence another little thing that I'm going to leave you with before we uh, move on is using open strings I used to see that as cheating basically but there are always open strings or most often in nine out of ten coincidence or cases you have open strings to play around with and in the case of a minor and if just look at the, the fourth position blue scale shape up here in the 12th fret the only note that's not represented is the 12th fret B string, but that's a natural minor note. So, but I'm just gonna use the E string here, just to, and, and you can use the same sequence of going, just try to play the, the third fret, pick it, hammer on to fifth, pull off again, and pull off down to the open string. Hammer on to the third and start over. And practice this with the metronome, so it's not just something, something, right? And you can do that with any one of the steps here, natural minor steps. Look in the in the PDF that comes with this video.
So have fun with it. And don't be, you know, don't be ugh, too, you know, too good to use open strings when you play fast or you, you, you create these, you know, Gary Moore wasn't, you know, too good to do any of that. He just did whatever it took to create the effect he wanted. And that's so obvious when you watch him play. And it's just like the amount of passion and, and intensity he, he puts into what he plays. It's just, you know, and he just, he will do anything, right, uh, to get that across. And so, and you should do the same thing. That should be the main lesson from Gary Moore, if it's up to me anyway. So use the open strings and use the simple sequence in two different ways. And then the last thing before I go, uh, really the last thing, is once you have that sequence down, use it to create simple licks, like go. You know, tie it together. Might be a little bit difficult in the beginning, but as soon as you have the sequence down, you can just start coming up with endings that sound good. And it's a really good idea to have the jam track running in the background as you do it. I'm just gonna do it now and then we can fade out and end this session.